welcome to another math lesson. This is Mr. Polarski. We're going to be talking about proportions today. This is lesson 3-4 from Prentice Hall Mathematics, Algebra 1 textbook, copyright 2009. The title of that lesson is Ratio and Proportion. Our focus is going to be on proportions in this video lesson. The objectives for today, I will be able to solve proportions. I will be able to solve problems with proportions. Proportion, an equation stating that two ratios are equal. In a previous video lesson, we talked about ratios and how a ratio is another word for a fraction. Here we have a proportion, A over B is equal to C over D. You can read this proportion as A is to B as C is to D. Notice, instead of saying is, we say as, so as is acting as the equal sign here. A is to B as C is to D. A and D are what we call the extremes of the proportion. And B and C are the means. And this gives us the concept of cross products. It's a property of mathematics, cross products of a proportion. If A is to B as C is to D, then A times D is equal to B times C, or the product of the extremes is equal to the product of the means. So we have the cross products here, A times D, and B times C. In this numerical example, we have 2 over 3 is equal to 8 over 12. We know they're equivalent fractions, so when we do the cross products, or the means in the extremes, the extremes in this case are 2 times 12. The means in this case would be 3 times 8. And if we simplify this a little bit, just for the heck of it, 2 times 12 is 24, and we know 3 times 8 is 24 because those are basic multiplication facts, so we can see that the cross products are equal. And we're going to use that fact to solve a proportion. Here we have example 4t, where we have 3 over 4 is equal to x over 9. Using the cross products property, we multiply 9 times 3, and that would be like our a times d. So 9 times 3, we could write that down. 9 times 3 being equal to the other cross product, 4 times x. Then we simplify that. 9 times 3 is 27, being equal to 4x. And we simply divide each side of this equation by 4. The 4's divide out on the right, so 4x divided by 4 is 1x. And 27 over 4, we could leave it as 27 over 4. An improper fraction is okay. Or we could write that as 6 and 3 fourths. Or we could write that as 6.3 or 6.75. So any one of those answers would be okay. Moving on to the next example, it's a problem-solving situation, example 5T. A machine at the Hershey factory produces 500 peanut butter cups per hour. At this rate, how long would it take the machine to produce enough peanut butter cups to fill 730 packages? Each package contains four peanut butter cups. So we're going to set up a ratio, actually, to solve this problem first. What's actually being compared here is in the first sentence, a machine at Hershey produces 500 peanut butter cups per hour. We can write that as a rate. That sentence gives us a rate or a ratio that we can write. And that ratio would be how many peanut butter cups a 
Let me see if I can write a little bit better. How many peanut butter cups? Are produced and how many hours and we are given this ratio that 500 peanut butter cups are made per hour so that's a unit rate where you have 500 peanut butter cups oh in one hour so that'll start off our proportion that we have 500 peanut butter cups being ma manufactured in one hour now the thing is we're being asked and the question, at this rate, how long? This is the question right here. These are the two question words. How long? So we know we're, need, we need, we're solving for time. Now, when I set up a proportion, whatever's in the top and the left has to be in the top and the right. So what's ever in the denominator on the left has to be in the denominator on the right. The number of peanut butter cups made in one hour, 500. So that's 500 peanut butter cups over one hour. X is what we need to find how long we need to how long it's going to take to fill 730 packages if each package contains four peanut butter cups that's what's going to go up here we need to take these two numbers 730 and 4 and we need to multiply them when we multiply them we could do it by hand 4 times 0 is 0, 4 times 3 is 12, carry the 1, 4 times 7 is 28, plus the 1 we carried would be 29. So we know we need 2,920 peanut butter cups. And so we solve the proportion by using our cross products. X times 500 would give us 500X, and 1 times 2,920 will give us 2,920. Then we simply divide each side by 500. The 500s on the left cancel, leaving us with X. And 2,920 divided by 5,000 is 8 point, or 5.84. And that would be hours. So it's going to take 5.84 hours to produce enough peanut butter cups to fill 730 packages when they each contain four peanut butter cups. Remember, it all starts off with this ratio right here peanut butter cups per hour. We're given this ratio, 500 peanut butter cups made in one hour, and we have to set up the other side, so we had to figure out how many peanut butter cups we actually needed. Remember, it's not just, it's not 730, 730 times four, because there's 700 packages with four peanut butter cups in each packet, so we have to multiply 730 and four to get how many peanut butter cups we actually needed. A lot of students make the mistake of putting in 730 instead of multiplying these two numbers first. Here we have a proportion that's very algebraic. By that I mean these are just two expressions. There's no uh, problem solving involved here. Uh, we need to use our cross products to solve this. We would multiply 8 times 6x minus 2. And I'll write that down. That's one of the first things I'll do is I'll write that down. And I'll write that down using parentheses. So we'd have 8 times 6x minus 2. And that's going to be equal to the other cross product, 7 times this expression. Seven times 5x plus 7. So what this ends up being is an equation with variables on both sides. We've talked about that in previous video lessons. To solve this equation, we'll first need to distribute. We'll multiply uh, 8 by both of these terms. 8 times 6x gives 48x. And 8 times minus 2 is 
minus 16. On the right of the equal sign, we have to distribute the 7. 7 times 5 is, or 5x is 35x. And 7 times plus 7 is plus 49. Now we have an equation with variables on both sides. So we eliminate one of the variables from one of the sides by subtracting, and in this case I'll subtract 35x from both sides, Forty eight X take away thirty five X gives thirteen X. Bring down the minus sixteen, bring down the equal sign, bring down the forty nine. Next we undo the subtract sixteen by adding sixteen to both sides. On the left hand side, negative sixteen and plus sixteen are opposites, so they become zero. In class I say they cancel. On the right, we simplify 49 plus 16 to give 65. <laughs> lastly, we undo the div multiplication with division. Divide each side by 13. And the 13x divided by 13 leaves 1x or just x. And 65 divided by 13 is 5. After all that work, the solution, the number that would make this equation true, is 5. And we could check that answer real quick. By substituting 5 into the original equation. So on the left, that would give us 5 times, or 6 times 5 minus 2 over 7, and that's supposed to be equal to 5 times 5 plus 7 divided by 8. And we need to simplify. I'll just verbally walk through the simplification. 6 times 5 is 30. 30 take away 2 is 28. And 28 divided by 7 is 4. On the right hand side, five times five is twenty five. Twenty five plus seven is thirty two, and thirty two divided by eight is four. So the solution does check. Solving this complicated problem can be simply done by using cross products. You do have to remember to distribute to both terms after you write down your equation. Then it's using some equation skills that we developed prior to this video lesson on solving proportions. Thanks for watching today. This has been Mr. Polarski on solving proportions. Bye bye.